Hello and assalamu alaikum students. So this is Muhammad Ali and um, we are going to continue from uh, where we left off last time uh, about sanitation and poverty in lecture 13 of human resource uh, development course. And uh, last time we covered some of the sanitation aspects and definitions of different types of sanitation systems, uh, how they affect health outcomes and uh, the correlation with the poverty based on the World Bank report that we are going to continue reading in this lecture as well. So this is lecture number 14, continuation of uh, what we discussed last time in lecture number 13. We covered last time the key findings of the report that was the executive summary and today we are going to discuss a little bit more detail about uh, the evolution of poverty in uh, provinces and districts and in some cases tehsils as well for Punjab and um, we will also look into different types of asset ownerships, um, other different indicators that have been changed during this uh, period of study. Okay, So chapter number one is where we are starting from and chapter number one is covering only poverty and uh, comparing how Pakistan has done uh, uh, over the period of time and how different regions are also progressing over the period of time. So you may have seen a lot of different studies recently on poverty and uh, this is the beauty of having data available. If data is available then a lot of different types of analysis can be done and this is what we are seeing right now with Corona virus as well. Um, there is a lot of data available and you are seeing many beautiful different dashboards and um, uh, data analysis, predictions and so on. Um, some of them are off. I also did some of the uh, predictions and they proved to be wrong. I'm happy that they proved to be wrong because I was comparing some trends, uh, Pakistani trends with Italian trends. Anyways, uh, that was the similar case with poverty as well with the um, uh, frequent data availability of highest and PSLM data sets. Uh, we um, had data access for uh, thousands of individuals from Pakistan and uh, many different organizations like World Bank, UNDP and other uh, Pakistani authors as well. They have done some analysis on poverty and evolution of poverty over time using these data sets. So, it um, highlights the importance of data. Um, if you have good quality data available, then there are many different possibilities of actually find, um, doing some data driven analysis that could feed into the policy. So you know, this is what has been happening with uh, poverty as well. Uh, by the way, recently um, I just saw on the Pakistan Bureau of Statistics um, website, this is uh, 2nd of May right now, 2020, they have launched micro data set of the recent PSLM slash highest. So highest used to be, um, uh, it was alternate. Uh, first, they, um, they used to launch PSLM that was on district level with some asset indexes to measure wealth but there were those uh, data sets were um, very um, informative about different household characteristics, health characteristics and so on. Um, alternatively, let's say in 2014-15 it was PSLM, then in 15-16 uh, it was um, highest and in highest this survey is more focused on income and expenditure. Uh, very useful for calculating all these poverty indices. Uh, so this time 2018 and 19 they have done a combined version of both. So it is not representative at uh, district level, uh, it's only at provincial and rural urban uh, level uh, but it covers a lot of different things. Um, even the indicators that were not available before in any of the PSLM and IS, food security and other kind of detailed analysis that uh, might be useful for some of you if you want to do some research on them. So uh, when you are watching, um, I, I checked the link on uh, PBS website, it doesn't work right now but I think in a few days time it will be working and uh, I highly recommend that you download that data and do some analysis. Uh, we as the students, as researchers, we always look for 
new areas of research and uh, this is just uh, this kind of data is available ready readily available but uh, not many people work on it um, so I highly recommend that you do that you can update this analysis what I'm showing right now uh, the latest data set that was used in this one was 2014-15 PSLM so it has been five years uh, you have data available for last year um, go ahead do some analysis um, see where Pakistan has been um, what uh, progress Pakistan has made since this report so uh, I highly recommend that you do that okay so let's start this lecture chapter number one poverty and uh, it shows that the key messages are the following Pakistan uh, poverty in Pakistan has declined rapidly over the past decade so in last 10 years it has uh, so again I uh, repeating that that in when they say past decade it means that um, 10 years before 2015 even though this report was launched in 2018 they did not have data for 2015-16 high years uh, this report took about three years to complete so the latest data available was 2014-15 so when they say last decade it means that four 2004-5 to 2014-15 in some of the indicators they have also used different years but generally speaking this is what they mean um, so overall poverty has declined but uh, interprovincial gaps remain this is the second point and uh, within provinces so this is what is beautiful about uh, detailed analysis so generally we see that um, you know I'm talking to uh, young students who are uh, just starting their career in um, economics, academia and economic research. Uh, so most of the time we look at, the, we think about a topic, we look at um, the previous papers, we search for those previous papers in Google Scholar for example. We find a similar topic on a similar country using similar data set and then we lose hope. We are like okay this idea, this idea has been explored before, let's find something else. Um, I don't think that you should approach it like this so you can see in this report that many other reports have been done on the same topic using same data sets but this report is much better because it goes much deeper so notice that the first key message is at national level then slowly those so there is a transition as well in the first line they mentioned nationally in the second line of the first bullet point they already mentioned provinces in the second bullet bullet point they're talking about differences in provinces in third uh, bullet point they are for, further digging down within provinces what is the uh, rural and urban divide okay and then within uh, provinces they are also looking at district level so this is what adds a lot of value to the analysis because simple um, digging down into the data because we have a lot of data sets available not only PSLM high years but also DHS and mix and so on if you combine all these together you can find many interesting aspects of, um, of the Pakistan economy and you can guide policy accordingly. Okay, so uh, learn from this, um, I'm not even talking about poverty right now, I'm just talking about how good analysis is structured, starting from national, going towards provincial, within province, urban, rural, digging down further, what is the district level poverty and uh, how dif different districts um, uh, compare with each other. And then we'll also see that there is a south and north divide. So we already looked at rural and urban there is a south and north we saw that in last class lecture 13 as well so these are the four different uh, line trend lines um, in, actually they represent they are the same graphs but uh, uh, to uh, make it more readable they have shown it in four different um, uh, graphs so is the same graph but you have what you have to see is that this line uh, light blue line is the national drop in poverty from 2012 to 1314 and all the other lines are provincial level lines so if this is uh, figure 1.1 a this is for Punjab meaning that the Punjab's line is bold out this is the bold line this is for Punjab in this uh, figure 
the dark blue line or purple line is for synth the per synth line is pulled out so synth line is also here but is uh, very thin um, just like the other provinces so emphasis has been put on punjab here by bolding this line on synth here by bolding this line khyber pakhtunkhwa here and balochistan here by bolding this line so this line is for balochistan so apart from balochistan you'll see that most of the uh, provinces have clear downward trend. Balochistan has seen increase in poverty, then decrease in poverty, then again in increase in, uh, it's now decreasing slowly, but the poverty rates are much, much higher than uh, other regions, also national poverty levels. In Punjab, poverty levels are lower than national level. So relative to other provinces, people in Punjab are better off. Their level of poverty is lower and it's also declining very smoothly. Uh, this line is for uh, Sin. So Sin uh, did pretty pretty well in 2004-5, but then uh, uh, rose above the national level. So only at this point it was um, below uh, national level. Then it rose above. Uh, so poverty levels in Sin are higher than national level in most cases. This one, this one, this one. This is at the same level, but. Anyways, you get the point. And uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, even though significantly de declining at the last point, 1314, this level is below national level. So Khyber Pakhtunkhwa has been doing uh, relatively better than, let's say, Balochistan um, and Sindh as well. So this, this decrease has, has been really, really sharp. So this is why it's interesting to update this analysis. Uh, last figure is for uh, something around six years ago. So since we have recent data available, we can um, add one data point and see how other provinces are doing during this period. Okay, so this table is showing the non-food share and food share in the total household expenditure in Pakistan. So on the left side, you can see um, quintiles, uh, bottom quintile, top quintile, meaning that bottom means that this is the poorest, this is the richest, and these are in between. So poorest, a little bit better, middle, slightly better than middle, and the richest. Okay, And here we can see that in 2001 and 2, 43% of the total expenditure of the poorest was on non-food and 57% was on food. It means that the poorest in the country in 2001 and 2 were spending about 57% of their expenditure on food and 43% on non-food items. This percentage has decreased for food over the years as compared to 2001 and 2. Now the poorest quintile is spending slightly less on food and more on uh, non-food share. Uh, this percentage has uh, decreased for all quintiles. So this is um, three percentage point decline, four percentage point decline, four again, uh, this is five and this is four again. So about on average four percentage point decline has been seen in all um, income divisions of of the uh, population in Pakistan. And you can see clearly here that uh, the richer segment, the richest segment is spending 55% of the, um, had been spending 55% of the total expenditure on non-food items, clothing, um, other items other than food. And uh, this, this has been increased even. So now uh, they spend 2013-14, they spent 59% of their in, uh, ex total expenditure on non-food items. And this is the similar case in the absolute numbers are increasing. You can see that 43, 44, 46, 48, 55. This is similar here as well. Uh, but uh, you can see that uh, um, for all income categories, the non-food share has increased over time and food share has decreased.
it kind of um, reflects that uh, it there can be many reasons behind it it could be that they uh, since poverty has declined they have more money to spend on other things uh, this it could also be possible uh, that uh, food items have become cheaper so they don't have to spend as much to eat the same amount of food but since we saw the rapid decline in poverty in the previous graph it kind of um, shows uh, one can guess that this is because of the decline decline in poverty and this figure shows us the diet diversity dietary diversity um, in the bottom quintile so the poorest uh, what kind of food they are eating so uh, since we are talking about human resource development we need we want our labor force to be healthy and productive so we want them to be educated we want them to be healthy and healthy in uh, has many different definitions many different components attached to the word healthy it's not only about food it's also about uh, proper care when they are young um, access to water and sanitation and hygiene what we are seeing what we're going to see um, here in the later part of this lecture as well um, the combination of these things what we'll cover in lecture 15 next lecture um, but it is also about food diversity it's not only about um, the quantity of food that has been fed it's about the types of food it's about you know, what kind of food has been given to the child so this figure is only for the poorest quintile bottom quintile and you can see that in 2001 and 2 this is the light blue line 2013 and 14 this is the dark blue line and uh, in 2001 and 2 uh, even uh, this is true even now but this was even more true in 2001 and 2 that um, uh, about 30 percent 29 30 percent of the uh, people living in uh, bottom quintile they rely on cereals so they don't have good uh, diversity in their diet uh, however things have been in improving so during this period now the look at the dark blue lines cereal consumption um, share of cereal consumption in total food budget has decreased milk and milk products have increased fruits and vegetable consumption has increased edible oils are about the same um, sugar uh, items have decreased actually but the good thing is that meat and seafood has increased egg consumption has increased so uh, this hints towards the improvement in diet diversity because they are consuming different types of food they have included most uh, households so this uh, jump is about uh, th three to four percentage points it's a good jump considering the size of the population and uh, these people are now eating milk uh, products and uh, drinking milk many of them are about five percentage point they are consuming vegetables now it could be because of the decline in poverty uh, maybe because of the awareness that diet diversity is important but uh, since we are talking about poverty we are focusing on that aspect so this is this could be because they can afford uh, because milk products fruits and um, meats and eggs these are relatively more expensive than cereals so they can afford to buy these products um, as compared to cereals maybe this is why cereal consumption has um, gone down and other types of uh, food items um, are increasing so that's a good thing and in this figure we we are looking at the asset ownership and some of the assets uh, have increased the ownership of has assets have increased this is for the bottom quintile again so, uh, so if this was for the total population that one could argue that um, this is biased because rich people are buying more and more stuff so th this is not the case here it's just for the bottom quintile and uh, on left hand side this part right here the um, a figure 1.3 a this is for the types of asset that grew um, figure b is for the types of asset that uh, um, fell down uh, two things to notice here so fridge motorbike washing machine television uh, ownership of these items have significantly increased ownership of bike 
and radio has decreased. Um, this, is, this is correlated with TV. So people who uh, can afford to buy TV now, if they have used TV, so they don't need radio anymore. Um, if people are buying more motorbikes, then they usually don't need bikes. So, uh, but it's more, it's very common to have bike and uh, motorbike together in a household. So say they simply don't throw it away uh, because household sizes are bigger. So some other family member uses the bike. So you can see that the increase in bike ownership is much sharper than the decrease in, uh, sorry, increase in motorbike ownership is much sharper then the decrease in bike ownership. So, but it, these are these two are correlated, as we can uh, clearly imagine. So this is also because of the decline in poverty. They can afford to buy different types of goods. Again, this is for the bottom quintile. So uh, things are improving for the poor people in Pakistan. So this is what this graph is showing, at least with respect to the asset ownership. Now. We have seen uh, the differences in uh, provinces, but within provinces there is also a rural and urban divide and this has been persistent. This is the problem. Divide is okay, but if the divide is persistent, in some cases increasing, then this is troublesome. And uh, you'll see that in these um, set of uh, trend lines, graphs, that these two lines, the light blue ones are for rural and uh, dark blue ones are for urban in all these graphs. And as you can see that A is for Punjab, B for Sindh, C for Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, D for Balochistan. And you can see that the differences in poverty. So in rural areas, poverty levels are higher. In urban areas, poverty levels are lower. But look at the difference at the beginning of this graph. And look at the difference here. It's almost the same, right? Uh, about uh, how many? 14 percentage points here. Uh, about the same here. One uh, percentage point here or there, right? So, and you can see this from uh, the picture as well. And this has uh, even increased in Sindh. So this gap between rural and urban has increased over time here slightly increased also in Balochistan. This gap was uh, smaller. The trend line has been showing the same thing. Um, uh, some of this is uh, data um, artifact as well. So we are not ignoring that. But um, overall, since we have multiple time periods, it, it becomes safer to analyze two different uh, point of time. So uh, whatever the error is here, because we have used similar methodology, the same error would be here. So um, given assuming the, knowing that there are some errors and data related errors, we can still compare the two. So this is why this is safe. Otherwise, if this was one point of time, then um, it would be uh, very difficult to interpret what these two means. But since we are comparing two different years, it makes sense. Uh, in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa, however, uh, the gap has uh, declined. So this was 20 percentage points. Now it is about 15. Um, the, so the, they have done better. So even uh, not only that the, the poverty rates are declining, but also the urban rural gaps are declining. So Khyber Pakhtunkhwa has done a much better job in reducing urban rural divide in poverty levels than other provinces. So the rural urban divide is not only limited to poverty levels. This is also very clear and evident when you look at the access to basic services. So uh, this is now we have been looking at the poor, poorest segment of the population. This is for everyone now. Everyone is included, all segments of the population here. And we are looking at, um, again, the dark blue ones are urban, light blue ones are rural. So we can clearly see that prenatal um, consultation is much higher in uh, urban areas than rural areas. Similarly, uh, births at the hospital are higher in urban areas than rural areas. Um, even though urban areas are doing better, you, what you should uh, look at is this uh, percentage is even less than 80%. So even in urban areas, 
about uh, a little bit more than 20 percent of the births are not um, uh, administered at the hospital, which is worrying because uh, uh, this is what leads to long term illnesses, uh, delivery complications, uh, premature mortality and so on. So this has to improve even though urban is doing much better. but. In absolute terms, it's not doing. This is not the ideal situation for urban areas. Immunization rate. Uh, urban, rural areas are not uh, too bad um, uh, as compared to urban areas, but this can be improved. And this is what you see in um, other aspects as well. Electricity coverage is access is less in rural areas. Gas significantly less. Uh, in most uh, rural households, they use wood and planks and other different kinds of uh, uh, burning fuel uh, rather than gas. Um, education as well, um, enrollment rates are much higher in urban areas, um, especially when it comes to female uh, and uh, this has to change. Uh, again, the same case as, as I was mentioning here, uh, the female enrollment ratio here its percentage of population in uh, urban areas. This is less than 40 percent, slightly over 30 percent. This is very uh, troubling and this has to improve. But right now we are just looking at the urban rural divide. So in all these aspects you can clearly see that urban areas are doing better. In this figure we can see that uh, top quintile is doing much better as one would expect as compared to the bottom quintile and um, and within these quintiles urban rural divides are clearly present um, in natural gas for example if you can see on the left hand side bottom quintile uh, gas connection is very 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 low uh, about five percent or so and uh, in urban areas this is higher um, even for the poor poor households but this is this is not uh, uh, very good sign. This is 60 percent and uh, this is enrollment ratios as we saw before much higher in top, top quintile in both rural and urban areas than the bottom quintile. So rural urban divide even within uh, bottom and top uh, wealth quintiles are quite evident. So this figure 1.7 um, it is a very interesting graph because uh, these light blue lines are districts in Balochistan dark blue ones are districts in uh, Sindh, uh, light green ones are in Punjab and the yellow ones are in uh, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa. This one uh, outlier right here is the um, Islamabad, the, the capital of the country. And uh, this uh, bar chart is sorted by poverty levels and uh, you can see that 40 poorest districts this line divides uh, this line is at the uh, at 40 um, uh, poorest districts and uh, these uh, poorest districts most of them are in Balochistan and uh, and the second number is, is of Sindh and the 40 richest districts are mostly in Punjab uh, some of them are in KPK and uh, one is uh, right here this is Islamabad I think this one is Karachi so uh, those um, it's quite clearly uh, shows that uh, there is a north south divide within a country so most of these regions are in the northern part of the country most of these regions are in the south southern part of the country and these are the um, districts with the decline in poverty. So all of them, uh, all, all districts are represented here and these bars are telling you how much uh, of the poverty has decreased over the period of um, uh, 2006 to 2014-15. So you can see that um, these uh, green ones, Balochistan uh, has the, all these districts have shown highest decrease in poverty which is a good sign even though still the poverty rates are quite high but they have shown a significant decrease over the years so things are getting better there. In Punjab these are some of the districts in Punjab where 
uh, things are improving and uh, there are some places like Tando Muhammad Khan, Tando Al Ayar, Ghotki uh, where poverty rates have actually increased. So this is very alarming for these reasons that over the period of time even though most of the districts are showing decrease in poverty even in Balochistan this, these regions are showing increase in poverty. So something is definitely wrong and has to be fixed. So now look at let's look at chapter number two and uh, we covered the poverty chapter in detail. Now let's look at water and sanitation how it looks like. Let's um, go through the key messages first and uh, so the first key message is over the last decade Pakistan has seen substantial improvement in access to water and sanitation uh, along, the, along with the sharp decline in open defecation. So not implying that there is a causality but you may notice that this is the same almost the same wording for poverty as well. So sharp decline in poverty is accompanied with improvement in water and sanitation and hygiene. So it already shows that there is a correlation between the two. However, the uh, quality is a biggest concern not only in terms of water but also in terms of sanitation. Um, uh, even though improved water and improved sanitation has increased, the quality is the biggest concern. Um, we'll uh, look at some of those indicators later on. One of the key findings of this whole report is the reliance of self-provision. What does self-provision self mean? Self-provision means that households are forced to or they choose to invest in their own water and sanitation infrastructure rather than relying on government systems. Uh, what is wrong with that? Number one problem is that uh, if you are extracting water uh, from um, underground sources that is true in uh, many of our households in not only in urban areas but also in rural areas more so in rural areas in Punjab actually more than 80 percent of the households rely on uh, groundwater sources. What happens is that uh, there is over extraction of water and water table goes down and uh, um, it becomes more and more difficult to extract water from underground sources and deeper you go into uh, the water table uh, more problem problematic it is it becomes in terms of chemical contamination so the shallower the water depth is it is more likely to be biologically contaminated deeper it is it is more likely to be chemically contaminated arsenic um, and uh, salinity and so on all these problems all these uh, types of contamination lead to a lot of health problems including cancer, uh, liver, lung problems, uh, kidney problems and so on. So this is what we'll see later on as well. So uh, public service delivery is failing uh, and this ha that has to be looked into. So this is the very important message out of not only out of this chapter but also out of the entire report. So this box 2.1 shows that uh, improved water is not uh, enough anymore. We need to uh, move beyond that as we discussed very briefly in our lecture 13 as well. So tier 1 right here on the left is MDG tier uh, of improved water. So this was the baseline set for the target set for the, for the countries to achieve in uh, uh, to 2000 uh, uh, to reach by 2015. Now this has improved. Uh, so tier 2 is now to have basic water. Basic water means that it should be within 30 minutes round trip. So if this is not water is not available within households then it should be it should not be more than 30 minutes away from the household. Uh, and this um, water should be available at least three days a week. Uh, in most cases and uh, you'll see this in the highest data sets not only the latest one also the ones before that um, only few households get 24 hours uh, water supply in pipes unless you have your own self -provi self provided boreholes or hand pumps and so on tier 3 is to have uh, water on premises uh, not interrupted for a full day in past uh, two weeks so this is this reflects the failure of the system um, 
and uh, E. coli. This is E. coli is the uh, name of the bacteria that um, fecal coliforms. So this uh, this if this is a, this is um, found in the water supply, then it means that the water is biologically contaminated. So. Um, not more than zero to hundred. Uh, not more than zero um, E. coli. So, in other words, there should be no E. coli in hundred milli milliliter of water. So, this is if this is uh, achieved. If all this is achieved, then this means that we have reached tier three of safely managed water. Tier four, even better than this, is to have piped water. Uh, it should be seven days a week. 24 hours a day um, or at least 50 liters per person per day so even if it is not available 24 hours a day it should be sufficient enough so this is the point um, not more than uh, zero E. coli and uh, this was only for bacteriological contamination here we are also talking about chemical contamination uh, and here we are not talking about affordability here we are talking about affordability it should be affordable for the bottom 40 percent of uh, the population who are living uh, who are poor uh, bottom 40 uh, quintiles of the income brackets in highest they ask people whether they know if uh, whether they know about the service providers of their water supply some of the households uh, report that they don't know who is providing water if this is rural community if this is uh, ngo if this is government or somebody else so a uh, tier 4 also includes that the households should know who is their service provider so that they can ask uh, or complain for the poor uh, service delivery and make them accountable involvement of women cost recovery, water security uh, comes under tier 4. Tier 5 is even more stringent, um, more indicators for contamination and uh, satisfaction levels are included. So all of these are in addition to what we have seen here. Tier 5 is the best type of water, uh, good quality water that is uh, required by WHO, the best level uh, with everything included and this is uh, mostly we found we find this in developed countries it, all these criteria combined are found in um, very highly developed countries uh, many developing countries lack all these things similar box is for sanitation where mdg was about flush to flush and pore flush uh, ventilated improved paid composting toilets these were the targets but now, uh, even in MDGs, there were improved sanitation, uh, SDG, uh, which is now called SDG basic, um, improved type facility, and uh, it's, it should not be shared. So one more addition to all this is to uh, it is that this uh, facility should not be shared. Sharing means that um, if more than uh, if more families are sharing one uh, sanitation facility, then there is a big chance of uh, fecal contamination and uh, transfer of bacteria from one person to the other. That's why it should be unshared and safely managed in, uh, include in addition to improved sanitation. Uh, it should not be uh, only limited to the infrastructure or system of sanitation installed in the household. It should also be uh, safely managed fecal matter should be disposed of and transported safely and um, additionally uh, hand washing uh, in the wash when we talk about wash is water sanitation and hygiene so safely managed sanitation also includes hygiene uh, it means that there should be a hand washing station meaning a basin or something like this with soap and water so this figure is comparing the left one is comparing two different years over the period of 10 years what has been the improvement in Pakistan on the right hand side this shows us in 2014-15 latest data available for in this report uh, what is the urban rural, rural divide so you can clearly see that uh, pipe water access um, actually has decreased which is really problematic and this is largely true in Punjab uh, people are more relying on motorized pumps so people are moving from uh, pipe water and hand pumps 
towards motorized pumps. So the ones who are using hand pumps, they uh, can afford to have motorized pump because of the uh, reduction in poverty and so on uh, because the motorized pumps are more efficient and uh, much more reliant, uh, reliable in the long run. Uh, so more people are moving from hand pumps to motorized pumps and since service delivery is uh, poor in pipe water systems, people are all also moving from pipe water systems to uh, motorized pumps. Uh, unprotected wells are decreasing. Um, people relying on rivers, ponds are decreasing, uh, filtration plants are increasing. So this is uh, partly because this only covers one or two years of uh, the last government. Large government invested a lot of money in uh, filtration plants. There was a, a scheme called Safpani scheme, but this was much later than this report. But even before that, uh, filtration plants, especially in Sindh and southern uh, Punjab, were the uh, main type of water sub, uh, water supply mechanism because of the high level of salinity salinity in the water so if there is low level of salinity and uh, arsenic then simple chlorination works because it treats bacteria and it makes it safe in terms of uh, bacteriological contamination but if it is uh, chemically contaminated then you need um, different types of filtration methods and filtration plants are useful in that regard. Now looking at the figure on the right hand side, clearly you can see that urban areas have much higher access to pipe water than rural areas. Hand pumps are predominantly more frequent in rural areas than urban areas. Motorized pumps also are more used in rural areas. Uh, filtration plants, um, as I mentioned before, these are installed in uh, uh, urban areas by uh, were installed in urban areas by previous government or even though one or two years are covered of the previous government in this one. So most of them were in uh, Faisalabad, Lahore. So this is what the what this shows. Uh, but later on they were installed in um, Sindh and uh, uh, rural Punjab as well. So this is not covered in this one. Um, unprotected wells mostly in rural areas, river pond mostly in rural areas as well. So this figure right here compares the same um, indicators for uh, water access across provinces for the over the period of 10 years. And you can see that uh, in Punjab, as of now, 2014-15, not now, but the latest uh, period available, this is about more than 50% motorized uh, pumps, and this is uh, slightly less than 40% uh, hand pumps. So combine them together, it, it becomes a more than 80%, 80-85%. People are relying on hand pumps and motorized pumps, which means they are self-providing. And this is problematic not only because of the depletion of water table, as I mentioned before, but also because most of the times uh, this power, uh, this water is considered to be safe and simply people drink it. So in this figure or set of figures, we are not looking at the water depth. Some of these uh, water uh, sources are very, very shallow and they are biologically contaminated. The ones that are deep are very likely to be arsenic contaminated. There was a recent study in Nature on, um, on uh, arsenic contamination of water sources in Pakistan and we uh, can clearly see that uh, most of the rivers, uh, even rivers, it, even though they are shallow, they have arsenic contamination. So imagine what is happening in our underground water sources. And this is why we see I'm not saying that it's the only reason, but this is why we see a lot of uh, kidney problems uh, lately uh, because we drink um, arsenic and uh, uh, saline water with the high fluoride in it and so on. Since this uh, mostly relying has been relying on hand pumps and it has increased over the period of uh, 10 years, pipe water has decreased, decreased uh, in uh, Balochistan, most people rely on surface water um, and Khyber uh, Pakhtunkhwa, again, just like other provinces, pipe water supply has decreased, motorized pumps have increased here as well um, and uh, most of the people rely on, on pipe water still. 
So, th this is the highest level of um, uh, highest percentage of people using this type of water source which is pipe water. So, this is what I was mentioning before. Uh, you can see here that about 58-59% of the households in Pakistan get 1 to 6 hours of water supply in pipe water every day. So, this is uh, more than half of the population. Then uh, this has been um, improving. So, this, uh, this number has increased here uh, in 2014-15. 19 to 24 hours, uh, this percentage has almost doubled from 9 to 10 percent to 20 percent, which is good, but uh, uh, still, large proportion of the population receives one to six hours of uh, water in, in pipe water sub, uh, schemes. This is why we see a shift from pipe water to self provision, motorized pumps, and hand pumps. This percentage is much, much higher in Sindh. Um, and uh, only if you uh, this these numbers are uh, predominantly in Karachi so uh, other areas in Sindh are even doing worse and uh, this these bars for one to six hours are higher in all all provinces even in Balochistan um, less than one hour is uh, was much higher about 50% in 2005 and 6 this has improved uh, about halved by 2013-14 so this is uh, uh, much uh, very much encouraging so in some graphs you see 5 6 and 13 14 in some graphs you see 14 15 and uh, uh, 4 and 5 the reason is that some indicators are available in high s only some indicators are available in pslm only and as i mentioned in the beginning of this lecture these surveys have been uh, conducted um, uh, alternatively uh, one year it used to be PSLM, the other other year high S, and this is why some indicators are available in high S, some are not. This is why you see differences. These uh, figures are taken from high S, so this is why uh, even though this uh, this source says that 2004, 5, and 14, 15 uh, taken from PSLM is in, incorrect because this data is not uh, it's not available. In PSLM, this is available in high S. That's why you see 5, 6, and 13, 14 here. Uh, in 13, 14, it was high S, not PSLM. Okay. So, <laughs> one side note that even organizations like World Bank do these kind of mistakes. So, don't be surprised. So, these two maps are showing you a very interesting thing. And this point, I, I have been highlighting um, since the beginning. Um, uh, of this uh, lecture series is that there is a big difference between improved water and uh, uh, good quality water and uh, one of the sources of good quality waters, water is pipe water because uh, it is taken from the stream uh, 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 treated through chlorination and then supplied to the uh, household so there is less chances um, theoretically there are less chances of contamination so even though you see access to improved water has improved over the years, um, th all these blue uh, districts are very encouraging because they have improved water access. But look at the figure on the graph uh, map on the right hand side. All these red districts are reflecting that um, pipe water access is um, 1 to 20 percent. The orange ones are 21 to 30 percent, the red ones are 1 to 20 percent. So, look at this, it's almost all of the districts in uh, Pakistan are red. It means that pipe water access is very, 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 very low as we saw in, the, in, the, in some of the uh, bar charts that we saw before. So, this is where things have to improve. Um, in big, big cities, the situation is good. You can see some blues in Karachi, some blues in Lahore, um, kind of greenish, uh, not too bad, 51 to 60 percent in Quetta. Uh, Peshawar is, even though it is a um, uh, city, not doing very well in terms of uh, pipe water. But apart from these few areas, 
generally speaking, it's all right. Now coming towards sanitation, uh, as compared to 2004 and 5, open defecation has decreased. So this will, uh, bar was much bigger. Now it is smaller. Uh, reliance on septic tank has increased. Flush to sewerage, uh, sewerage has also increased. Um, and uh, other types other than the ones mentioned have decreased and uh, so open defecation has decreased which is a good sign but uh, reliance on flush to open drain has increased which is not really nice um, moving from open defecation to flush to open drain is an improvement but open drain means that the drains are open and uh, fecal matter is um, open in the air and uh, it is spreads uh, the risk of fecal contamination is very very high Pit latrines are almost the same, slightly increased, but uh, what we need to see, what we want to see is increase in this light green bar. We want this to be 100%. This is the ideal because sewerage system means that fecal matter is taken from households and disposed of uh, uh, ideally at a place where it is treated and then uh, uh, contamination is uh, is at the lowest level so that it is not contaminating the underground water sources not contaminating the river and uh, fecal matter is treated and not not lying in the open but what we are seeing here is that open drains are also increasing so this has to be fixed this figure very quickly shows simply that this uh, diamonds right here are uh, open defecation rates in 2004 and 5 and these bar charts are for 2014-15. You can see that clearly that uh, in all regions, rural, urban, overall, all provinces, um, open defecation has decreased, which is a good sign. These sets of figures are for rural sanitation. And uh, since sanitation is uh, open defecation and sanitation has been a problem, in, especially in rural areas, this uh, uh, set of figures shows you that um, so light green is 4 and 5, dark green is 14 and 15. Uh, these set of figures show us that uh, septic tanks have um, increased in Punjab. Um, septic tanks in flush and sewer, uh, flush to sewer are very very low in synth. Latrines and other unimproved toilets are high even though they are declining they are high. <clears throat> the de increase in uh, is quite evident in flush to open drain. So uh, it's good that again repeating the same thing good that people are moving from open defecation but their reliance on open drains is problematic. Septic tanks are much better than open drains uh, and these are increasing in Punjab so there is an improvement and should be uh, appreciated. Uh, in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa also septic, septic tanks uh, have been increasing rapidly again very good but just like sin even worse than sin uh, latrines and other improved toilets are increasing in uh, Balochistan. So Balochistan needs um, urgent attention in this regard. Now continuing from what I was say, uh, highlighting about open drains, uh, the um, uh, facilities that are um, available in the household, are they connected to drainage or not? This is what is showing shown in this uh, figure 2.11. It shows that in Punjab, uh, no drainage, uh, the percentage of toilet systems with connected with no drainage has decreased. Open drains, uh, connected to open drains has slightly increased and covered underground drains are very, very low. No drainage is very, very high in Sindh and also in Balochistan. So there is no drainage at all. So open drains are bad but no drainage is worse so there are pits um, something like this and they just uh, fecal matter is matter is simply dumped that is the problem here so um, and this has been increasing no drainage has been increasing in Khyber Pakhtunkhwa uh, open drainage has been decreasing so um, uh, covered underground drains is is something that we want to uh, we want uh, to see and this this bar should increase rapidly it involves a lot of investment i know but uh, research has shown that uh, this type of um, drainage system or uh, sanitation system is the best for uh, human health
so at district level similar to the graph uh, similar to the maps that i showed of um, water where i compared improved water with pipe water this one is improved sanitation and flush to sewer so pipe water was the best type of improved uh, improved water flush to sewer is the best type of uh, improved sanitation so you can see that even though there are a lot of dark blue areas in northern punjab and uh, northern um, kpk uh, Punjab is mostly blue, um, even though in, in this indicator, uh, even in this indicator, Balochistan and Sindh are not doing very well, apart from Karachi here, dark blue. But when you look at the right hand side, in Islamabad, in Lahore, in Karachi, um, apart from this, some of these areas, most of them are light green, meaning 1 to 10 percent of the households have. Uh, flesh to sewer. So if this was coded red as it was in pipe water, it would be red again completely. So not a very good sign. We need to see this this increase. Uh, so there is a concept called sanitation ladder, which means that the bottom le bottom level is open defecation. When you improve a little bit, you go to pit latrine and then open drains, then septic tanks and the highest level, the best level is flush to sewer. And we want this to increase. So the next chapter is about child stunting and role of water supply, uh, water supply, sanitation and hygiene. Uh, it has uh, some uh, graphs in it, um, regional comparison. So I left this to you. I um, I'll probably have an assignment um, on this so that we we need to have an, another assignment to replace our quiz so this will be on chapter number three instead of covering this i'm uh, going to give an assignment on this and in the last next lecture i will cover one of my papers along with emmanuel Escofias's paper on uh, the multi-sectoral approach to nutrition and this is connected to the chapter number three here and i'm going to assign uh, give you an assignment on this and uh, the due date will be, of course, after the after your uh, BS project defense. Uh, I know that there are two assignments. Uh, uh, there will be two assignments, uh, this one and the final assignment that I am um, yet to give you. Uh, but of course, we have to do something about it because there are no face to face classes. So I'm going to conclude my uh, lecture uh, 14 here on water and sanitation and poverty. Uh, uh, this report has already been uploaded on uh, MS Teams and uh, I'm going to, since I have all the names, I'm going to assign this assignment uh, most probably as a group to the same groups that are being assigned for the final assignment. And um, I want you to cover chapter 3, maybe chapter 4 as well. Um, I will mention that in MS Teams either today or tomorrow. So thank you very much for listening to this lecture. Uh, I'll be back with lecture number 15 on child stunting and multi-sectoral nutrition approach. Uh, lecture 16 will be um, most probably the continuation of that, but I will announce it in the, in the next lecture. Okay, thank you very much.